Okay, so in this video, I'm just going to finish up uh, where I left off in that last video. That last video was talking about a, um, an MSC appliance or a MARPI appliance for uh, expansion. So this video is not just for that type of appliance. This is just going to be for how to seat bands on a digital model, uh, how to get them to fit uh, properly, or how to basically simulate the uh, traditional uh, crown size of these teeth so we know how to fit bands. Because that's a, a trouble or a difficulty with digital design is how do you know what size bands to fit. Uh, and carving a stone model is a little bit easier than a printed model. So how can we correct these models so that you can size out bands? So this will be a, more applicable to you know a, a laboratory or an ortho office, uh, I would I would assume. So anyway, um, okay. So one of the first things I'm gonna do. Uh, I apologize if my volume isn't very loud. I am having a little bit of issues with my microphone, but um, anyway. So hopefully it's good enough. First thing I'm gonna do is this is my model and I'm going to duplicate it because I always like to have a backup in case, you know, I can always reload the same model, but I'm gonna duplicate it. I don't need to show these guide pins anymore. This is relevant for this video. One thing I will show you up here is if you go to view and go to orthographic view, notice that what it does, everything looks really weird and awkward. The mouth looks different. Uh, this is not how you, this is how you see a patient as a matter of perspective. So it's like a tunnel orthographic everything is sort of flattened out it's hard to describe but i it noticed that when i moved the model around i had the same perspective of all things of all teeth uh, whereas in the non-orthographic view you know as i move it around i can see the buckle here but as i slide it over i can't because my i'm a fixed perspective from the middle that is natural that's what we're used to using our eyes in a fixed uh, uh, spot and looking outward, which is good, you know, from cause from a cosmetic perspective. But from an, uh, an engineering perspective, the orthographic view is better because I don't have to tip things around as much to work around it. So that's just a little side uh, note. Hopefully that helps. Okay, so I'm going to focus on this um, this molar right here. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm basically I can you know you could fit a molar a band to the buckle and the lingual, but ideally the band is it's going to be slightly subgingival, you know, maybe not all the way to the, ging the gingival margin on the facial, but, you know, down a ways. So what I need to do is I need to get rid of this papilla tissue and the tooth behind it uh, a little bit, make myself some room. So I'm going to use, uh, and I am going to kind of swing around a little bit, but just not as much as, you know, ordinarily, if you will. I'm going to go to select, or if you're not using the orthographic view, I should say. And I'm going to come here to lasso. Now, lasso allows us to trace align what we want to trim and I'm basically trying to encapsulate the papillae on either side and um, yeah everything along the gingival margin now I'm gonna hit B the B button smooths the boundary and click OK so now I've created this area I'm gonna hit control G which creates a surface group okay now it's a different color and I'm going to move on. I'm going to do the same thing on both sides of both of these molars. Oops, control G. I don't need that. Select. I need to go to lasso. This doesn't have to be perfect, but the better, closer you can get, the better off it'll be. Okay. Once again, I'm hitting B for boundary, which is under uh modify i believe yes smooth boundary and then i hit accept and then i'm going to go to modify create face group i'm using shortcuts but that I mean, normally but i just want to show you where those are so now we're doing the same thing on this one hit select lasso oops wrong tooth i'm trying to work on this tooth select You can always let go of the mouse and then pick up tracing elsewhere if you need to. So don't worry about having it lined up exactly perfect your first time. B, enter, control G. And then select, S is the select button. And now I had to look back to make sure I did this right before. So you can see that it's a little bit hard to see there. So maybe I'll tuck it in here. Uh, 
we're going to be obliterating the adjacent tooth. So just be aware of that. You'll know it by the end of the video before you actually do this yourself. But B, that's fine. It came up here a little bit higher than I'd like, but it's okay. In fact, I can come and I can hold the shift button and just de-highlight a little bit of this. Notice that it actually did create a surface group in there, but um, hit B again, smooth that out, and now hit Control G. All right. I'm getting rid of this one. Control, control Shift G will remove that surface group. All right, so now we've got surface groups for all these areas. That's the hardest part of this whole process because now, and once again, let's duplicate just so we don't lose our work. And for here, I can just click the select button, double click, double click, double click, double click. And now we come up to edit deform or press the D button. And then I'm going to change it to the direction to the Y axis, which in this software is vertical. The offset, I want to be flat. Okay, you see what I'm doing here? And now I'm gonna change it to we'll say four millimeters, arbitrarily picking four. That is gonna be vertical, uh, going upward. Negative number would be downward. So if you're working on a lower model, you would do negative four or whatever number. So you can do less if you want, but this tells me I've got this much of a bandwidth. Okay, I um, say that looks pretty good. Click accept. And if you wanna see what it looks like without all these colors, once again, I'll duplicate. So I can always come back to that model if I want, still have my surface groups. Hit Control A, that highlights everything. Def modify, we're gonna hit clear face groups or Control Shift G. Okay, and this is our model. This is what you would print. And this should be easy to fit your bands on because you know that it's the right diameter or on the outside. They're not gonna get much wider and this ensures that you don't have undercuts or anything. You should be able to slide your bands right on top of there. And once again, you could create your, you know, set your MSC screw here or whatever this is going to be, and then wrap your bands and uh, bend your bars, and attach it. So, okay, hopefully this helps. Uh, this is going to again be probably most practical for ortho labs and um, any, yeah, anyone doing ortho bands and whatnot.